<laughs> and we are live. Hello, hello, everyone uh, from sunny Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, let me just make sure that we are on the right platforms. Okay, I see there are two people already watching on YouTube. Man, guys, what's happening? Say hi. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, let me just set up over here, get the links going, and let's get ready to uh, rock with any questions that you might have um, about your Google Ads. Uh, first of all, I think let me introduce myself. Sorry for being so rude. Um, my name is Devin Thomas. Um, I am a Google Ads consultant. I've been doing Google Ads now for the past seven years. And today, I really want to do a deep dive into leads, lead generation, anything to do with creating uh, leads for yourself or your clients with Google Ads. Now, I have been doing this and I've been teaching other agencies how to do this. I've been teaching business owners how to do this. And I've also been doing this for the past, like I said, seven years. But I've worked with budgets as small as $1 per day. And I think a lot of people have this confusion where... Um, they think you need this big, massive budget to start advertising with Google Ads, but you really don't. You can start on whatever budget um, you need to start on with Google Ads. It doesn't always have to be something big, something scary. It just needs to be something that's manageable for you. So with all that being said, welcome to the live stream. I'm going to chill with you guys for a couple of hours. Ask me anything when it comes to Google Ads and I will gladly assist you. I should also mention that the stream um, is proudly brought to you by my Google Ads course. It's called Profitable PPC. And what I am going to do is I'm going to link that down below in the comments. So let me just get that link up. And by the way, if you're on the stream, say hi. Let me know what uh, country you're from. Oh, MCX, welcome back, my friend. Thank you so much for um, making it. Really appreciate it. I spoke to you this morning, or did I speak to you yesterday afternoon? Can't remember. Anyway, it's good to have you here, my friend, and I hope you are well. How is the weather in Greece? Um, yeah, how's the weather in Greece? Hey, Rajesh, how are you doing? Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Rajesh, also let me know which country you are from. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I've got a rule. I'm going to say that rule right now. If ever you want to ask a question in the live stream, you need to let me know what country you are from. People who have already been here already know that. Uh, but for anybody who's new, who's tuning in right now, if you have any questions with Google Ads, I want you to just tell me your country. I'm going to say it now, and I'm sure when we get a whole lot of people in the stream, uh, I'm also going to have to repeat myself. So, yeah. Definitely. But welcome, Rajesh. We appreciate you. We appreciate having you. All right, guys, the link for the Google Ads course is linked at the top and it's starred as well. And also, one thing that I'm going to do is I am going to keep this link nearby. Um, I am going to link for lead pages as well, because I think a lot of you are going to have trouble with landing pages, how to set up a landing page and how to get that landing page to actually get leads, either for yourself or for your clients. All right. So um, MCX uh, says, um, yesterday it was 20 degrees in Athens. Today it's sunny with a bit of clouds. Yeah, I think this side it's also sunny with a bit of clouds. But in South Africa, there's such a nice breeze. And we've been missing that, man. We've just had this like heat wave. It's either hot or it's cold. But this is lovely in between weather. It's uh, the type of weather that you want to go to the park and you just want to relax and you just want to chill. And MCX also says that he will be using my course link soon. Oh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Guys, let me know if the mic is working. Let me know if the camera angle is working. Let me know if you can hear me properly. And I am ready. Guys, ask me anything that you want to ask me about Google Ads, about lead generation, about setting up your website. If you guys want to show me some of your websites that you've set up, you're more than welcome to do so. I'm going to be streaming and I'm relying on you guys to let me know 
what you want to know because you guys are basically the content if you guys don't ask me anything this is going to be the most boring live stream on planet earth so rajesh mcx whoever the third person is on the street stream hi <laughs> let me know what you want to know all right cool let's just see if everything is popping off properly there we go all right, so who's going to get this party started? Come on, people. Questions, 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 questions. What do you have to ask me about Google Ads and how can I help you today? Thank you so much, MCX. You should give yourself a Greek name, MCS. Um... All right, so Rajesh says he's completely aware of our rules, 100%, and he's telling me he's from Singapore. So that means Rajesh is probably getting ready to ask me a question. All right, Rajesh, how are you doing? Um, yeah, fire away. Fire away. And also, guys, don't be shy. I'm, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you, um, I'm not going to give out any harsh uh, answers today. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be peaceful. I'm going to explain to you clearly how things work. Unless you guys are asking me about stuff that's clearly like uh, borderline. Then I can't guarantee what happens on the live stream. But for now, ask away and I'll be more than happy to answer anything. I also wanted to play some music before the live stream. And then I forgot the song completely that I wanted to play. So I was like, okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. So since I'm still waiting for questions to come in, um, by the way, if you're brand new to the live stream, you can ask me any questions about Google Ads that you want down in the chat. Just let me know what country you're from. What I want to do is I want to explain to you guys a little bit about where I think a lot of people are going wrong. Like I said, I've been doing this for the past seven years. And here's the thing about lead generation. Most of you, 90% of you are making the one fatal mistake. And that one fatal mistake is sending all of your traffic to your website instead of to a landing page. If you do that one thing, all of a sudden you'll start getting better Google ads results just by using landing pages instead of um, just by using landing pages instead of uh, websites, you'll automatically start getting better results as well. Um, all right, Mark, Mark, um, we've got a rule here. Before you ask that question, I need to know what country you're from. So just let me know. And MCX, I did not get any link whatsoever. But what I'll do for you, MCX, is if you send that link on, um, if you send that link on LinkedIn, what I'm going to do is I'll look at it over there and I'll share my screen. So just send me a message on LinkedIn. Guys, if you're trying to send me links and the links aren't going through, add me on LinkedIn. I think the link is down below in the description and you can just add me there. I don't know why my camera just did that. Oh, welcome from the UK. I used to live in the UK for two years. I stayed in Maidstone, which is in Kent. I'm not sure if you're close to that, Mark, but yeah, I have very fond memories of living in the UK. I miss the snow so much. It was my favorite thing because obviously here in South Africa, we don't get snow. We just get sun. Even in winter, we just get more sun. Um, you can actually get a tan in winter. So yeah. All right. So Mark, your question is, and MCX, I didn't forget about you. I'll answer that after I answer Mark. Okay. So you're in the Midlands. All right. That's super cool. Um, do you know how to improve rankings on a Google service, on Google ser local service ads? Um, Mark, before I answer this question, I want you to let me know what have you tried before? What are the couple of things that you've tried before? Or have you just started on your journey with Google ads and you're just trying to figure out how you can improve your ranking? All right. Let me know. All right, I am going to go on to LinkedIn while I wait for Mark to answer this question. And let's see what we get here. Okay, propertizing.com. 
All right, consultation date. All right, cool. I'm, I'm actually liking this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the screen. I just want to put um, MCX. So you just want a landing page review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. Let's look at this landing page and let's see how uh, we can improve on it. All right. So clearly this is aimed towards real estate and it says uh, roller coasters are fun but not for your business. Um, and it says 78% more consistent uh, stream of potential buyers to your property with digital ads. Now, I actually like this. I like the fact that you've condensed what you're doing on this landing page. And I love the fact that you're just explaining that I'm going to help you get a steady follow of clients into your business. What I don't think is working for you over here, MCX, is... The photo is good, but the colors on the photo are a little bit too understated. So it's a little bit too easy to miss that this is a roller coaster going around the mountain. So you need to add a pinch of color in there. As well, if I'm looking at your call to action here, you got first name, email, phone, consultation date. You're giving them a lot to think about. What I would do if I was you would be, I would go first name, last name, I would say email and I would take that details. And as soon as you send through the first email, I would then book a consultation date because I've got a feeling a lot of people are coming here and they're going, mm, is Wednesday good for me? Now I have that thing. Oh, is Friday good for me? Now I have that other thing. Um, let me save this page and I'll come back to it. I've got a feeling that's happening. You can also check your bounce rates uh, just to confirm. Um, sell your properties smarter and faster. Mm, okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so with this photo over here, I'm not sure if we're getting the point across. What I would do is I would potentially put a property like the property that he has behind and I would maybe put sold across it so that I can show you that this is a sold property or we've closed the deal. So what you want to do is you want some sort of symbol here that represents that the deal is automatically closed. Otherwise, I thought this landing page was about this dude over here. And clearly it's not. You're just saying selling your properties uh, faster. All right, cool. Now, this part over here, get your clear advantage. No competition, pre-qualified leads, save time and money, guaranteed results. All right. So potential buyers uh, focus exclusively on your property high intent qualified leads looking to buy now focus on serving prospects leaving the hard work to us all right so mcx this part over here what i want you to do is i want you to focus on a tangible measurable example right so i'll give you an example if you say um no competition that's fine it's easy to understand if you say pre-qualified leads um you can say something like we pre-qualify 90% of the leads. And because of this, the closing ratios for our clients have shot up by X amount. So in other words, here you're talking about the pre-qualified leads, but I want you to talk about what is the good part about that for them. Pre-qualified leads means you will increase your conversion rates. It means you're going to spend less time on calls with people who want nothing. It also means that you're only going to deal with the people who are serious about converting. So that means your revenue is going to shoot up and you need to tell them that one sentence is not going to do it. You need to be more specific because here we're starting to get into selling. So you need to sell them a little bit harder. Save time and money. Again, when it comes to this particular one, what you want to do is you want to quantify this. So you could say something like, we have saved our clients. And you can even do this if you just have three clients. You can say something like, we have saved our clients over 80 hours in work time with our pre-qualified leads. So you want to make it tangible. How much hours have you saved for someone? Very important. Always try and make it tangible. And when you say guaranteed results over here, I would stay... 
I would stay away from guaranteed results unless there's a promise behind it. So if you say something like we guarantee results or you don't pay, that's a promise behind it. But if you say guaranteed results, starting to sound a little bit sleazy. So you might want to just think about how you're saying that when it comes to um, guaranteed results. Property, uh, property advertising that converts. Okay, got this, got this, got this. Don't do this. They don't care about this. What you want to do is you want to put a couple of case studies in front of them. Um, if you put case studies over there and you show them how much leads you've had, how much leads you've made, um, it's going to be much better than showing them pictures of advertising because I promise you this, they are not going to care what the ads look like. They are going to care more about the results. And also you're kind of hiding some information over there as well. You want to put this on a separate panel just so that I can see how much you charge because the average person is not going to know that if I hover my mouse over here, what usually is going to happen is they're just going to go straight over. That's what's going to happen. So be careful of that. All right. And I love the fact that you have this little power couple over here. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's you, Andreas, and your lovely girlfriend or your lovely wife uh, or your business partner. And yeah, 38 years of experience. Oh, yes, this we need to talk about. All right. So you're saying 38 years of experience. Is there a way that you can say this differently? Because I promise you that other people are saying the same thing. So you might want to say something like we've helped over 400 um We've helped sell over 400 real estate properties. Or what you can do is over $10 million worth of real estate uh, properties sold. You want to go a little bit deeper and you want to make them understand what that experience gets for them. And also, if you say results driven, that's good. Tell me how many clients have you got results for? Uh, when you say constantly evolving, say something like we update our staff training every three months. Give them something where they go, wow. Let me tell if just think about it this way. I like to think about it this way. If your customer went to go and brag about you, what would they say? Would they say, hey, I want you to meet Andreas. He's got 38 years of experience. Or would they say, listen, this new guy I have, he's so good. He got me so many pre-qualified leads. And the best thing about this guy is he's already closed like $20 million worth of real estate deals. So he knows what he's talking about. Think about that next time you write these down. And I promise you this, it'll start getting much better. It'll start popping off a lot more. Also, one thing I haven't noticed is I haven't seen one single call to action except the one on top over here. So what I'd like is a little button here. Book us now, call us now, get started. A little button here, get started where they can click. It opens up to a form. And at the bottom over here, I love this, but you are killing yourself because you're making your call to actions the same color as your icons, and they're a little bit too pale. So I need a little bit more color so that it can draw the eye. I hope this helps. Um, I'd love to go um, in even more detail, but I, I see the questions piling up over here. So yeah, thank you very much for that, Andreas. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, I'll gladly come back to this and I'll answer those questions for you. But yeah, appreciate you uh, putting out the first question. All right. So uh, Andrea says helps a lot. Fantastic, man. I appreciate you too. I appreciate you for being here. All right, Mark, let's get back to your question. And after that, Rajesh, I'm going to jump into your question. Okay. So Mark, uh, been on ads for three years. Uh, recently, the calls are low. Tried increasing the budget, getting positive reviews, also responding to incoming calls quickly. Um, lots of fake businesses with fake reviews, um, have also appeared on local service ads. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much true. All right. So Mark, here's the thing. If we look at Google ads and how Google ads decides to rank your business, there are three things primarily that they look at. The first thing they do is they look at your click through rate. What is your click-through rate on the ad? Now, if your click-through rate is higher than 6%, right? So for every 100 people I show, if less than six people click on that, what's going to happen is you're probably going to get a drop in quality score because Google Ads is not going to think that your ad is enticing enough for people. So the first thing always that you want to do is you want to actually go and look at your, your ad and what your ad is saying. That is the most important thing. After you do that, I want you to go and I want you to look at your average view duration or your average visit duration on your website. 
if your website average visit duration is less than let's say for example 30 seconds maybe 43 seconds then you definitely have a website problem whereby traffic is coming in they see your page they see what you have and then immediately they're bouncing off if that is the case then you need to start looking at the copy on your website because that's going to be another good indicator so i also want to put this out there you might have a great business and you might feel like you haven't changed anything you're still doing business the exact same way you're still spending the same amount on ads that you used to or you're spending even maybe a little bit more and you're wondering why are you dropping down in the rankings so or why aren't you getting as much clients as you used to you have to remember that the market doesn't stay stagnant there are other people coming into the market and they are looking at your offers, copying your offers, and then trying to do one better that your, than your offer. So for example, the people with the fake reviews, you might get other people that copy your branding as well. So you have to constantly evolve your ads, constantly evolve your offering, and make sure that you are up to date. So you got to Google yourself and you got to actually go there and you got to actually see what the businesses around you are doing and seeing maybe where you're falling short. And here's another thing, if you haven't optimized your ads or if you're constantly optimizing your ads, but you're noticing that you are getting diminishing returns, like you're optimizing your ads, you're doing everything the experts say, but nothing's really changing. That's because Google's AI is looking at your ad and going, okay, this is a good ad. Let's see what happens to them as soon as they get to the landing page. Oh, they don't stay long on the landing page. And then what happens is they mark you down and they lower your quality score. Now, there's two key metrics that you can look at in your Google Ads dashboard that are that it's going to help you with this. It's um, top search impression share, right? And I'm trying to think what, what the other one is. Landing page experience score. Those are the two metrics that you want to look at alongside your click-through rate as well that should help you get that increased push in the rankings that you're after. And I want you to understand something. The more personalized your page is, the more personalized it is for that specific service, the higher Google will rank you. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I have um, uh, a car repair place and I have gearbox fixing as a service. I've got oil changes as a service and we also do brake discs. Back in the days, I used to be able to get away with just having a website and having those as little tabs on my website and running ads to them. What's happening now is Google is actually favoring the pages that only deal with that specific service. So you'd have to create a separate landing page, a page with no links at the top and no links at the bottom, just for gearbox repairs, another one just for brake repairs, and another one just for oil changes. And if you run separate ads on those, you'll notice that each ad ranks a lot higher because all that's on that page has just got to do with Gearbox service. So in other words, you need to specialize a lot more. Now, I know I'm answering this question in a roundabout way. I wish I could give you a magic formula, but I'm going to have to take a look at your business, at your ads. I'll need to understand also what type of searches that you're showing up for. But what you're telling me, basically what I'm seeing from your question, Mark, I think that is quite close and it's quite um and it's hitting um close to home as well um so yeah i hope that helps you and if you have any follow-up questions like i said before let me know all right so i'm just going to welcome everyone to the live stream that hasn't been here before um i want to i want to tell you that we're here we want to answer all of your questions but just let me know where you're from and i'll gladly get round to the question all right, so just a little bit of follow-up from Mark. Mark says, the thing is with local service ads is it directs, uh, it's a direct call to my business and completely passes the website and there's no way to edit the local service ads. I'm really glad that you said that, Mark. I am super glad, but your website is still a considering factor. I'll give you an example. This is how Google Ads works. If I was um, somebody who was a fraudster, who was a scamster, who decided, okay, I'm going to start scamming people today, right? So I set up a website and I know all of those details on the website are not really that good, but I'm just setting up a website to make Google think that I'm an official business. And I start running those local um, search ads as well, right? Google might not tell you this. You might feel like, oh, but they're bypassing my website completely. 
Google has a ranking for each and every single website. They check your user score. They check your, um, they crawl your page all the time. Sometimes you'll even get emails from, um, I'm trying to think what it is. It's on the tip of my tongue. Sometimes you'll even get emails um, telling you your Google Analytics bounce rate drop. Google is constantly looking at your website and all they're trying to do is they're trying to figure out, are you a real legitimate business that can actually help people or are you a business that's actually in the business of conning people? And this is why it's so important to keep your website up to date. Even though the ad bypasses it completely, Google is still reading your business information and putting it on the ad. This is why I, I, I say local ads. And also, you might want to try search ads out. Just a hint, but search ads, you're going to have a lot more control. You're going to have a lot more ability to get those calls, to get those leads for your business. So you might want to try it out as well. And one last thing I want you to check, Mark, is check if they haven't converted your ad to a performance max ad. It happens a lot. So if you go underneath ads, you go underneath status, there's something that says ad types. Make sure they haven't upgraded you. They say upgraded you to a performance max ad because performance max means you're going to take a giant performance hit. You're going to get a lot more clicks and you're going to wonder what the hell is going on because I'm getting so much more clicks, but I'm getting absolutely nothing. So yeah, those are the hints that I have for you. I hope this helps and you're more than welcome to ask me any, any follow-up questions, Mark. I know this whole Google ads thing is confusing. Um, I know there's a lot to go through, but... I hope that helps and I hope that answers your question. All right. Now, my friend from Singapore, Rajesh. Rajesh, let's see what you have to say. All right. So I'm planning to run Google Ads for my friend's new home renovation company. Um, this market is very small and competitive. They ex established players and platforms with established players and platforms. Example, um, Carousel never heard of carousel but okay um what specific tactics strategies and tactics would you recommend to help them um stand out generate leads and gain traction that is a good question all right so i i could ask how long has he been in business for but if you said it's a new company then yeah you're probably you're probably going to struggle all right so I'm going to give you three quick lead generation strategies that work for basically any business. We've tried this as well. The first thing that you want to do is you want to look beyond just the search ads if the search ads are very competitive. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to just Google home renovation company and you want to see what those companies that are coming up. And you also want to get a better idea of what type of servicing they're offering, what type of uh, prices they're charging. And most importantly, and this is what I teach all my profitable PPC students, go to the Google reviews section, go to their business in the Google My Business section, go and find the bad reviews and go and see what people are complaining about. So I'll give you an example. And this example comes directly from my Google Ads course. Uh, it's linked right at the top of the comment section as well. But basically what I do in my Google Ads course is I pretend that I'm in the lead generation for in the lead generation business for a gym. And I show you how to set up the ad for the gym, how to build the landing page for the gym, and then how to make sure that the campaign is optimized for this fake gym. And the first thing we do is before we build anything, before we write any ad copy, before we decide what our budget is, before we decide what our keywords is, we go to the Google My Business page, right? So all of you guys know Google My Business. By the way, I'm just going to share my screen just in case uh, some of you are wondering. So, for example, I'm going to go share my screen over here. Uh, let's just go share the screen. And for example, so let's pretend that this is for Jim. So what you want to do is I'm going to go to Virgin Active. Uh, and I am just going to go to Virgin Active K90, which is quite close to me, quite local to me as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go to this page. I'm going to go to the Google reviews and I'm gonna see what people are complaining about. So for example, if I go to the lowest over here, uh, the sales consultant lie about your contract conditions. The next one says, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Never see, never seem to answer the phone. 
never seem to be able to answer a phone call, uh, worse customer care. So now I can see what all, what everyone is complaining about. And this is where you want to say, oh, okay. So what matters to clients is, number one, sales consultants lying to them about what contract they're in. And number two, also them never picking up their phone. And I'm pretty sure if we keep on digging over here, they're going to complain about equipment as well, saying the equipment is old. So now, now that you're armed with that knowledge, now it's very easy for you to go and write your ad. Because now you can see what your competition is not doing well. And you can then hammer down on those pain points and make sure you write that loud on your ads, on your search ads, so that people understand, oh, our sales consultants won't lie to you. Or, oh, we make sure that we answer the phone within 15 seconds or if it rings um, three times. You need to go and see what people are complaining about so that when you build a compelling offer, that compelling offer has all of those things built into it. So that's strategy number one. Strategy number two that I have for you that always works, people think that it doesn't work, it always works, is YouTube ads. YouTube ads are the best thing. If you are in a highly competitive, a highly contested market, you want to use YouTube ads because what YouTube ads do is they kind of allow you to get very cheap clicks, very cheap views for people who are interested in the product or service. And you get in front of them now and that allows you to beat the competition because most of the competition are spending all of their money on search ads. If you don't have the budget to compete with them, YouTube ads is a great option for you. And last but not least, I would need to see what this website um, looks like. I see you say that it's new. It's just start started. But I would absolutely love to see what the website looks like because nine out of 10 times, when I look at the websites, even from my students, I've got students from all across the world, from Netherlands to USA, to Canada, to Australia, to New Zealand, to Thailand. When I look at the landing pages, nine out of 10 times, it's the landing page that's costing you money, especially if you're a new business. It's what you say. What you Guys, what you say is very important. I'll give you an example. I could tell you that I'm a Google Ads consultant, right? And I can tell you that I've got seven years of experience. You guys will go, okay, so what? I can tell you that I'm a Google Ads consultant and I've helped... 16 business owners go from $1,000 per month in revenue to over $2.5 million per month in monthly revenue. All of a sudden, you're going, wow, okay, I'm interested. Do you see what I did over there? When I just say seven years of experience, when I just try and write what the other people are writing, there's no differentiating because you're saying you've got 10 years experience, the next guy's saying 12 years of experience, the next guy's saying 15 years of experience. The customers don't care. You need to make it more tangible so that they go, wow, this is why this guy is different. This is why I should choose to work with this company, give them my lead because they look and sound like they know what they're doing and they solve the specific problem that I have. Um, so yeah, Rajesh, I hope that helps you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the comment section. Um, but yeah, I hope that I definitely hope that that helps you. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Devin Thomas. I'm a Google Ads consultant slash coach. Um, and what I want you to do is if you have any questions for Google Ads whatsoever is I want you to type them down below in the chat and I will gladly get to them. All right. So MCX, another question. MC uh, X says, um, when you start a search campaign, um, do you start with, say, three ad groups, your grouped keywords uh, on the same campaign and max clicks on manual CPC plus enhanced, but with what starting bid? I use phrase match. Okay, cool. That is a good question. That is an extremely good question. All right. So the first thing I do is, when I set up the search campaign, I set it up and I make sure that the keywords, I only have one set of keywords. I don't have multiple different keywords for multiple different things. I only have one set of keywords. And what I do is I make three ad groups. I make a broad match ad group. I make a phrase match ad group and I make an exact match ad group. And what I do is I let those ad groups run for the first two 
weeks. Let me just say sub to Chuki. Chuki, thank you so much for joining us, my brother. Hope you're having a good day. Oh, my sister, I'm not too sure, but yeah. Um, so what I do is set up the search campaign and then I set up broad, exact, and phrase match. Now, some of you might be wondering, yeah, but Devin, we know that phrase match is better than broad and we know that exact match is better than phrase. So why don't you just set up phrase match and exact match? Why would you go and why would you set up like a broad match campaign? Isn't that just going to waste money? You ever hear that saying, you don't know what you don't know? That is very true with Google Ads. See, what happens is a lot of digital marketers, they get all of this advice that they should have a big list of negative keywords, which there's no problem with that. They should have phrase match keywords or exact match keywords. And then you miss out on all the broad match search terms that you could have had, but you don't have any broad match keywords. So be very careful. You want to run this um, experiment first. You want to say, I got my broad match. I got my phrase match. I got my exact match. You want to run that for two weeks. And then you want to look at the data and what the data is telling you. Sometimes we have a broad match campaign that's converting more than the phrase match and it's cheaper and our leads are super cheap. And I was like, why didn't I just run broad match all the time? But you would never know that because maybe you're assuming that broad match burnt money in the past. or maybe it's going to burn money for you again. But broad match has completely changed. I'll tell you this one thing. And by the way, I don't like giving control over to Google, but I will tell you this one thing. I had a very good chat with Darren Taylor. And Darren Taylor, um, if you guys don't know, is the guy from The Big Marketer, the UK guy, also does Google Ads as well. We've got a podcast episode coming out together. Um, and he's mentioned that even normal keywords, right, that you might think don't work, Google has got so much data on what that person's been searching for for the past three years. So sometimes you might think that this is a terrible search. And sometimes that's the search that converts a lot and actually get you good leads as well. So what I do is I want the system to run first. That's why I allow it to first run with broad, exact, and phrase match. And I just put the three ad groups there and I just compare the performance for the first two weeks. Now, let's talk about your starting bids because I think starting bids are also uh, a good strategy. So let's say, for example, I get a client and the client's a plumber. Now, I know nothing about the plumbing space. I don't know how much I should be paying for clicks. Are the clicks $3 each? Are the clicks $30 each? How many clicks do I need to get a lead? I don't know anything. And most of the time when you're starting out a brand new campaign, it's probably the same thing where you're, fine, you're kind of discovering how much you need to pay. This is why you want to go manual CPC with enhanced CPC. And then what you want to do is you want to go to Google Keyword Planner Type in the keyword that you want, right? So you want to go to Google Keyword Planner. I think I actually have a YouTube video about this. Hold on one second. Because um, I just want to give you like a visual reference as well without having to blur out my screen in editing. Uh, so just give me a second. I'm going to find that. So basically what you want to do is you want to kind of gauge what is the most that somebody is willing to to pay for a keyword. What is like the most that somebody is willing to pay for the keyword and what sort of competition do we have? So I'll show you an example. I'm gonna share my screen over here. Mm. Oh, Rajesh, it's my absolute pleasure. It is my absolute pleasure, man. I am glad to help out where I can. Uh, by the way, Chuki, if you guys have any more questions on your Google Ads, just let me know. Um, I'll be more than happy to help. All right. so. I'm in Google Keyword Planner right now. This is one of my videos. Um, if you want me to link it below, just type link and then I'll link this video below. So anyway, in my Google Keyword Planner over here, I got average monthly searches. Obviously, I want a lot of monthly searches. So you want to make sure that you get more than 250 searches per month. The next thing you want to do is look at these two. Top of page, but low range and top of page, but high range. You want your maximum click, right? Your, your max click, what you're starting bid is, it needs to be in between these two numbers, right? So website development company. I know that the people who are getting the most that somebody's ever play, paid to get to number one in the search results is $6.64. That's the most somebody's ever played to be at number one. Let's say that's way too expensive for me. 
I don't want to pay that much, man. I want to pay like $1 or I want to pay like 50 cents, man. Why should I pay $6.64? Well, if you pay less than $2.48, you're not going to be in the top four search results. And our goal is to always get your ad into the top four search results. So I would look at this and I would put my bid over here. I would look at this and say, okay, what's in between $2.48 and $6.64? It's about a $4 bid. And that's exactly where I would start my bids off. Now, here's the best thing. Even if I get this wrong and I should be paying a little bit less, after a while, after two weeks of doing this, I'm going to go and look at my ad data and I'm going to see how much my average cost per click is. And sometimes I'll see that my average cost per click is way less. Maybe it's $2, $2.50. And then all you need to do is just drop your bid to $2.40. So the main point of all of the stuff that I want to drill into your head, MCX, is don't be stingy when you're running your campaign, when you're starting off a campaign. Make it loose. Get as much data as possible because that data is going to help you make so much better um, decisions down the line. Um, so that's what I want you to do. I just had a big smile because Philip could see us in the group. What's up, Philip? Hey, so glad to have you back. I'm just busy working on this uh, answer over here. Um, just about how much should you pay for your manual CPC bid? So, all right, MCX, I covered a lot of stuff. So what I want to do is I want to give you a recap answer just so that you have all of your thoughts aligned. Number one, start the ad. Number two, you want to make sure you have three ad groups, all the same keywords. I want one for broad match. I want one for phrase match. I want one for exact match. I don't want you to make any decisions. Let them run for the first two weeks and see what you get. Broad match is probably going to get you a lot more clicks, but a lot less um, direct traffic, right? But one pro with broad match is sometimes broad match gives you super low cost per conversions, cost per leads. And that's why sometimes it pays to keep broad match around. But you will never know this unless you run the three match types against each other. All right. So you started your campaign, you got your three match types. After you've done that, I want you to go to Keyword Planner and I want you to see what is the top of page bid and what is the top, sorry, what is the top of page bid high range and what is the top of page bid low range. And I want to make sure that your bid is in between these two, right? What I try and do is I actually try and lean closer towards the top of page low bid. Once you see that, then all of a sudden you're like, ah, okay, this is what I should be paying. And that's how you continue on. So yeah, guys, welcome to the Google Ads um, Q&A. If you have any more questions, I want you to ask them down in the chat. Please also let me know which country uh, you're coming from. Uh, just so that I, I know, like, and I want to know who I'm talking to at the end of the day. Um, I'm Devin. If you don't know me, I am a Google Ads coach slash consultant. I've been doing this for the past seven years. And what I do is I help small business owners figure out what's wrong with their Google Ads. And I help get them profitable so that they can scale their business. I'm not a marketing agency. I do not run ads for people. I teach people how to get smarter and how to run their own ads better. So if that's something you're interested in, ask me any questions down below. Also, I've linked my Google Ads course. It's right at the top of the chat, but I'll drop it in the chat again if anyone misses this. All right, cool. So MCX, follow up, makes sense. What if the high intent keyword, for example, Google Ads for real estate are like 10 searches a month? Do you use general no intent uh, Google Ads? that has 10,000 or so. Now, those are just bad keywords, right? So Google Ads for real estate, that's not what you want to do. That's not what your client is searching for. Your client is probably searching for real estate leads, real estate lead generation. That's where you're going to find the meat. That's where you're going to find your clients. You're not going to find Google Ads for real estate because your clients don't know what the solution to their problem is. Think about it this way. When you go to the mechanic and your car is jerking, I don't know why I'm using so much mechanic. If, are there any mechanics today in the chat? Let me know. If you're not a mechanic, pretend to be a mechanic so that I don't feel um, <laughs> alone talking about mechanics all the time. So think about it this way. If you're driving the car and the car's jerking, you're going to take it to the dealership. The dealership's going to look at it. 
and the dealership is going to say, based on our diagnosis, this is how you solve the problem. We need a new gearbox, right? But somebody's going to search for my gearbox is jerking. What is wrong with the gearbox? I got lights on the dashboard. I got an engine light on my dashboard. They're going to search for the symptoms. They are not going to search for the solution. A big problem with saying Google ads for real estate is you thought that your client has already decided that Google ads is the solution. In most of the times, they haven't. What they want to do is they want to say, sell more real estate, real estate leads, real estate lead generation, or how to get more calls for my real estate business. That's where the pain is. Their pain is I'm not selling enough real estate. Their pain is I only have two leads a week. I need to get at least 20 leads a week to make this business work. That's the business that you're in. You're in the lead generation business. The fact that you use Google ads, it doesn't really matter to the client. It matters a lot to you. It matters a lot to me, but it does not matter to the client. What matters to the client is the fact that you can solve their problem and you do some fancy digital marketing stuff on Google to do it and get them more leads. They don't care how it's done. So make sure that you're searching that. And I'm pretty sure if you search um, lead generation for real estate, read, um, lead generation for real estate or how to sell more real estate properties that you're going to get a lot more. Um, so for example, as well, let's see what you got over here. Mm, 10 searches per month, general, no intent, Google ads, 10,000 or so. Uh, I just gave an example. I have the lead ones too, but real estate leads is also low on search volume while lead generation is high, but doesn't have the market in it. So, okay. What is the search volume on real estate leads? Because I'm pretty sure real estate leads should be super high unless you're targeting like a tiny tiny area it should be high because here's the problem if we have 10 searches per month you're not going to get all 10 searches you're probably going to show up on 10 searches and you're probably going to show up and you're probably going to get your ad clicked on twice so what that means is we can't build a business on just 10 searches a month it's completely impossible we need a lot of searches. I'm looking for at least 250 searches per month in a specific area, or I'm looking for, if we're in a tiny area, maybe 140 searches. But I'm looking for a good amount of search volume because if I'm not getting a lot of searches in, you're not gonna be able to generate leads for your own business. It's just that simple. So we wanna validate and we wanna make sure there's enough customers in the market. And I promise you this, um, lead generation, is probably the best way to go if it's not real estate lead generation or maybe a uh, lead generation for real estate. Philip, you can help me out with this as well. If you can think about any keywords related to getting leads for real estate, but yeah, definitely that's what you're looking for. Don't go to Google ads for real estate. You will lose and you will lose big time on that. All right. Uh, I want you to check that report back to me. I hope that answers your question. Chuki. Yes, let's talk about it. Remember my friends, billboard advertising business that I ran the ad for? It's been going for 18 days, still no conversions. We've got 750 impressions, 83 clicks, 11% click-through rate, $3 per day, um, average bid. All right, um, I so I thought maybe it's the landing page. Typically speaking, We'd need about 300 to 400 clicks to know that it's a landing page, but let's assume it's the landing page. Chuki, what I wanted, what I want you to do is, if you're brave enough, can you send me the landing page so I can have a look at it? Um, one of our lovely people in the chat, MCX, he actually gave me one of his landing pages to look at, uh, and I was able to give him some good advice um, on what to do just to improve the the conversion rate on this page and the click-through rate. So what I want you to do is, if you can't send a link here, what I'm gonna do is I am going to drop, um, let's see, I'm gonna drop my LinkedIn profile and I want you to just send it to me via LinkedIn. I should really get an email address for this. Uh, you know what? Let's do that. Okay. It's fine. If it's not in English, I will use Google Translate. I just want to have a good look so that we just have an idea of what's wrong. Um, 
but yeah, don't worry. I'll use Google Translate. I understand it might not be a di direct translation, but I just want to get an idea of what the landing page looks like. So I can tell you if you're lost and you need to be found or anything like that. Um, all right. So uh, Rajesh says that was super helpful, man. I, I appreciate it. Everybody, welcome. If you have any questions about Google Ads, I want you to let me know that. Wow, it's so weird to see yourself on LinkedIn. I'm looking at <laughs> looking at my LinkedIn right now and I see myself being live and I'm like, why am I live on LinkedIn? Okay, cool. All right. So what I want to do is I am going to, I got your link. Um, so let's have a look and let's see. Mm. Okay. Let's translate this over into English. Okay, cool. Okay. Guys, let me know if you can see my screen over here. Uh, advertise with jumbo billboards in attractive locations, outdoor advertising services. Jumbo billboards, advertising LED screen, mobile billboards, companies that trust us, contact us. Ah, okay, Chuki. Okay. All right. All right. I can tell you what a massive problem this is. You're saying advertise with jumbo billboards in attractive locations in Zagorki. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Why would I want to advertise? Why would I want to advertise with a billboard? Everybody in the chat, I want you to write in the chat right now. Why do people want to use advertising? Why do people want to advertise with billboards? Write it down in the chat. Super quick. Come on, guys. Let's help Chuki out here. There's a little bit of a delay on the chat. When I say a little bit of a delay, I mean there's a big delay on the chat. But anyway, let's let's just hold on over here and let's see. Why does anybody need to use billboard advertising? Come on, guys. Let me know in the chat. Don't leave me hanging. I wonder if there's still a delay on the chat. I don't think so. But let's see. Okay, I'm going to give it about 15 seconds. I'm going to get a glass of water. I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you the answer. So a little um, cliffhanger over here. Oh, wait, my glass of water is coming to me. Thank you, Maria. Hmm. All right, cool. Um, so Chuki is saying it's not. Um, could you please clarify that as well? Anybody else in the chat? What do we use advertising billboards for? Mm. Oh, there's no delay. Oh, there's a bit of a delay. Okay, cool. So I'm going to give you an answer really simply and clearly. Um, automatic glass of water delivery. Yes, MCX, I like that. Just on call, you know? <laughs> If you are advertising the billboards, you are making a massive mistake. You need to advertise the fact that they are going to get more clients with the billboards. So you want to put something here, Chuki, that says something like, get your next 100 clients with a beautiful jumbo or a beautiful LED billboard, right? Give them a reason to want to contact you. They would want to contact you because you're getting them clients. They do not care about your billboards. They do not care that you have jumbo billboards. They do not care that you have an advertising LED screen or mobile billboard. What they care about the most is that you can get them more clients. And that's what you need to focus on. This first sentence should say something like, we can get you your next 100 clients or we will help you to get your next 1,000 clients. Or did you know that advertising billboards have gotten 6 million businesses, 6 million small businesses, 30% uh, more clients? You need to switch to the problem that your product is solving. This is not a problem that anybody cares about. Nobody wakes up in the morning and goes, oh, I need a billboard. Nobody does that. Even if they're Googling billboard, they're not really thinking I need a billboard. What they're saying is I need to get more clients. 
So what you want to do is advertise the fact that your advertising helps pull in more clients. So um, guarantee, well, I mean, okay, Chuki, I love this. I love that you're giving me pushback on this. I absolutely love this. Well, I mean, it's not likely that they can track or guarantee that somebody is going to reach out to them. It's mainly awareness. Fantastic. Now, here's where we don't have to overpromise, right? If I tell you, you can get your next 100 clients with a billboard, did I give you a time frame? Did I mean get, a, get your next 100 clients in the next three weeks? Did I mean get your next 100 clients in the next uh, three years? I didn't say that. Am I putting any uh, promise over here? Like, for example, uh, we will get your next 100 clients or your money back? No. The point that I'm trying to get to, Chuki, is some promises are over the top. They are lies. They are deceitful. They try and get you to, to buy something that it doesn't do. You know, like when you buy a milkshake and it says this milkshake will make you lose 20 kilograms in weight in the next three weeks. That's bad advertising. Good advertising is saying this milkshake will help you lose weight. That's good advertising. And that's what you need to do is you need to find something that's important to them so that they submit a lead. Right now, all you're telling people is that you do billboards. And I promise you this, this is probably why you got 83 clicks and nobody cares because when you say you just do billboards and you don't mention why, what it does for them, it doesn't help. Um, and also over here, once again, how many clients have you helped with your billboards? How many people see your billboards during the day? I know the stuff is not trackable, but you need to put something more tangible than jumbo billboards, uh, advertising LED screens, and mobile billboards. This is not going to help. Even if, you, even if you can put something here like get your business seen by more potential clients, right? That's, that's not a promise. You can just say get your business seen by more potential clients in Zagorki. That's something that somebody was going to go, wow, yes, I want that. I want to get more people seeing my advertising and my offers because then I'll sell more. So what you want to do is put in the benefits for them. And like I said before, Thomas, I see your question. I'm not avoiding you. I'm just busy going down this list of questions. And also, Umar, thank you very much for your question. I'm getting to them. But what I'm trying to say to you is you have to make sure that you put in what is in it for the person, not what is in it for you. What is in it for you is you get to sell more billboard space. That's what's in it for you. But that's not what's in it for um, the client. In my Google Ads course, Profitable PPC, uh, which I haven't linked, <laughs> but I will, uh, we have this section. I think let me show you guys this while, while it's on screen over here. So in my Google Ads course, Profitable PPC, we've literally got this section over here where we go and I take you through a great offer. And we talk about a landing page. And literally what I do is I talk you through how do you make somebody convert on a page, right? Oh, sorry. How do you make somebody convert on the page? And how do you describe your features and benefits? Sorry, it keeps on jumping up. I'm not sure why. But anyway, and what I basically make my students do is they go through this exercise whereby they say, this cell phone has got 250 gigs of storage. And then there's a little sentence over there that says, so you can. And then you say, so you can store more videos of your loved ones on your cell phone. So basically what that means is 256 gigs of storage is not the selling point. Storing more videos and photos of your loved ones, that is what the selling point is. Um, so, yeah. And also, uh, the average duration that somebody has an advertisement on a billboard is around one month, minimum two weeks. I couldn't care less, man. You have to get them to bite. If you don't get them to bite, if you don't get that lead, if you don't get that sale, you're not going to get any sales for your friend and then your friend's going to be out of business. You need to put something up there so that people understand that, oh, this is why I want to advertise. Um, so, yeah. I hope that helps you. And also, let's do this exercise while we're together, Chuki. Sorry for keeping all of you waiting, but I want Chuki to understand the point. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say uh, advertising billboard. 
Okay, you ready for this, Chuki? Are you ready? Let's see. Mm -mm. Billboard advertising, outdoor advertising. Um, rates from 10,000 uh, rand a month. That's our local. Um, and we've got here our street poll ads are available. Contact our team. All right. So let's do this. I want to go somewhere where they actually know a little bit of something about New York. Okay. Uh, outdoor advertising agencies, experienced media agencies with 15 years of outdoor, outdoor advertising agency, out of home ad experts. All right, cool. Billboards as well. Advertising made easy. Let's look at this. All right. Seamless buying across the globe. No, nope, we don't want that. Let's see this one over here. There we go. Let's talk about a promise. With over 7.5 million riders across the full MTA network every day, there's no pet better way to capture New Yorkers' attention with your brand message. We know that the most successful brands reach their audience in the right place at the right time with enough frequency to truly resonate with them. In fact, with an average commute of 41 minutes, the majority of commuters riding the MTA network six times a week Advertising your brand on the train platform provides you with the opportunity to connect with these New Yorkers in a meaningful way. Did they just promise you that you're going to get 7.9 million views? No, they did not. But they did tell you that 7.9 million people see, um, take the train every day. So there's a good chance they're going to see your ad. This is an example of great advertising. Well, not this specific line. This specific line is a great example of great advertising because they are telling you what is in it for you. There's no mention of, oh, our billboards, we do billboards on the train walls, we do billboards here. We, they don't mention that until later down in the page. Right now, you want to get them hooked, and this is how you get them hooked. So this is my point. This is what I was trying to say, Chuki. Let me know if it's clear, but you need to shift your mind to being like a marketer. Because you're thinking too much about, oh, I don't want to promise the wrong thing. I want you to get a hook, get a proper hook. And then we will bring that hook in a way that it's good, that you can deliver on your promise and that you're not lying to anyone. The last thing I want you to do is lie to people. But I also don't want you to cut your leg off because you want to be uh, so true. Because, I mean, then we could just have somebody come on your website and just say billboards, this price. Nobody's going to buy. That's the problem. So you need to hook them in. This is what I'm talking about. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for checking in. I appreciate you. Um, I'm pretty sure you're a regular by now. This is your second one, your second live stream or your third live stream. So Thomas, yeah, let's clap hands for them. I don't know why the balloons came up, but anyway. All right, hi, Devin. The ad um, is the ad quality score important? The score is measured on a scale of one to 10 uh, and available at the keyword level. A higher quality score means that your ad and landing page are more relevant and useful um, to somebody searching for a keyword compared to other advertisers. Um, is that true? Okay. Let me take a sip of water before I answer your question. Damn. How are you doing today, Thomas? You good? Ah. All right. Whew. Let me compose myself. All right. So if we were to list the most important things about your ad, and I put it in the top four order, okay? Number one with a bullet is your click-through rate. Click-through rate, extremely important metric, which you probably know by now. Number two is your ad copy. The way we measure ad copy is with click-through rates, so I'm more or less saying the same thing. Number three, once they are on the page, how long do they stay on the page for? Number four, are they converting? Okay, we want to tick all of those boxes first. High click-through rate, yes. Great ad copy, yes. Are they staying on the landing page long? Yes. Are they converting? Yes. And then you worry about quality score. Quality score is going to get your ads cheaper. 
it is going to rank your ad higher. But a quality score does not make your ad convert. This is the problem with all of the advice I see going on in the Google Ads world, in the digital marketing world. A quality score, having a high quality score does not equal having an amazing conversion rate. I've seen accounts that have high quality scores, very low conversion rates or no conversion rates whatsoever. I've also seen some ad accounts that have had super horrible con uh, quality scores. For example, my own Google ads have got horrible quality scores. Each and every single one of my ads have got bad quality scores. I'm talking about two out of 10, four out of 10. But if you look at my conversion rates on my ads, my conversion rates are 28%, 32%, 40% conversion rates because conversion rate is what gets you paid. I would rather have you worrying about quality score after you worry about those things. And here's the thing that nobody else also tells you about quality score, Thomas. Nobody can tell you exactly what quality score consists of. We know that it's the ad rank multiplied by whatever your bid is, but Google doesn't release exactly what goes into quality score. Google doesn't tell you exactly, oh yeah, you need to make sure your click-through click through rate is this, and you need to make sure that your impression share is this, and then we'll give you a good quality score. Google tells you absolutely nothing about quality score. Now, how this doesn't help you is when you're with a client and you're trying to get results with that client, if you're chasing off the quality score, it's the wrong target. The stuff that you can control, the stuff that does help you is your click-through rate, your ad copy, your landing page, average um, view duration, or even your landing page experience. You can check that out in the Google Ads dashboard as well. There's a column you can enable. And after all of that, is the ad converting? If it's not converting, then you have a conversion problem. Once you get the ad to convert, then that's when, my friend, that's when you worry about your quality score. Do not go chasing quality score. I do not chase quality score. And I'll be more than happy to send you a screenshot of my Google Ads. They're doing really good. The conversion rates are really high. But I don't give a damn about quality score. I worry about that last because I know if the click-through rate is good and my customer's happy and I'm getting conversions, I'll have all the time in the world to optimize the ad accounts. So don't pull the horse. Don't pull the cart before the horse. Have those four things in order first and then worry about quality score. I hope that helps. Sorry, I forgot to display your question. Um, I hope that helps. Um, and also let me know. Um, and also here, Thomas says, good, good. Doing some uh, research on checking ad performance and comparing it to others. Okay, fantastic. I hope that answers your question. But yeah, be very careful with quality score because people get lost in the weeds, man. They worry about quality score, quality score all the time, and they don't focus on actually making an ad that's making them money. Um, I had one client spending a big amount of money, and he was really focused on quality score, and I kept on telling him it was the wrong target, and eventually we had an account that was just wasting money every single month, hoping that Google would bless us with a better quality score because somehow that would change things. Quality score is not going to make your ad convert. Your landing page is, and your ad copy is. All right, cool. Um, let's see what we got over here. Rajesh, uh, reaching brand awareness, larger audience. Exactly, Rajesh. That's exactly what I was talking about. When you're advertising a billboard, you want to make sure that you're reaching a larger audience and that's what you're selling. You're selling their ability to reach a larger audience. I'll give you another example, guys. Um, if we have... A I wish I had a better microphone. This little crappy microphone doesn't even look like a microphone. But anyway, let's roll with this microphone. I want you to let me know down below in the chat, how would you sell this microphone in one sentence? What would you write on the website? What would be your first line on the microphone to sell? Your first line on the website to sell a microphone. Write it down below in the chat so that I know. All right, cool. Let's see what we got over here. Umer. Yes. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you so much for dropping by. I really appreciate you. If an account is brand new, how can we target a relevant audience on YouTube? Okay. Good question. If you want to target a relevant audience on YouTube, there's this cool software over here. It's linked down below in my, it's linked down below in my um, chat as well. 
but it's called uh, Tube Soft. Let me show it to you over here. Do, 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 do. Just click on this, go here. So there's this real cool um, software over here called TubeSift. And what TubeSift does is it will go through all the YouTube channels, right? As you can see, it says your precision targeting for YouTube ad. What it's going to do is if you type in a keyword that you're trying to target, so let's say, for example, fitness, or let's say, for example, um, I'm trying to think of something like, um, let's say life coach. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you are showing your ads only on videos that are talking about life coaching, how to get healthier, how to live longer and stuff like that. And TubeSift does an excellent job because it finds the videos that are talking about these things and it shows your ads. It generates a list for you. You then copy paste this list and you put it into your Google ads or rather your YouTube ads. And then you have a targeted list of channels and videos that you can show your um, that you can show your YouTube ads on. Now, there is a section in your YouTube ads where you can go, you can find the audience settings, and there's one that says placements and targeting, and that's exactly where you put this list in. Also, I want to give you a word of warning. If you are trying to do this by yourself without TubeSoft, you might have to copy 500 to 600 videos to get your ads to start showing. This is exactly why I use TubeSoft, because... I don't have the time to go look for 500 videos on uh, fitness or 500 videos on life coaching or 500 videos on motorcycles. I want this to do all of the hard work for me. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, like I said, it's linked below, probably in the description of this video. But what I'm also going to do is let me go and find that link and also post it there for you as well. What I'm going to do is also post to my Google Ads course. Uh, my Google Ads course is called Profitable PPC. And in there, I literally show you a strategy to find the relevant audiences that you need. But it takes time, Umer. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to just stumble across the right audience straight away. It does take time. Thank you very much, guys, for the microphone answers. I want some more uh, answers from you as well. How would you advertise a microphone? What would you write in the first line of the website as well? So. Um, let's see, TubeSoft, is Devin going to find it very quickly or is he going to waste everybody's time? Okay, so just give me two seconds. Let me go and get it for you. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. All right, uh, just by the by, that's an affiliate link. So just be aware of that. Um, let's see if I can copy the link. Copy link address i think that's the one anyway it's at the bottom of my youtube it's all the way at the bottom of my youtube video description if i can't paste post that link over here yeah it's doing a whole lot of weird stuff so anyway it's in the bottom of the video um help yourself to it all right cool so uh let's see we've got motivation can't stop me motivation can't stop me i think You've been here before, right? You've been here before. I want to say hi. How are you doing? Um, I wish I knew some Italian so I could greet you. But yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you. And I think we had we had so much fun last time you were on. So thank you, man. I really appreciate you. There's a lot of people coming back. So that's super cool. Um, so Thomas over here says, good, good. Doing some research on checking ad performance and um, comparing it to others. Fantastic. Um, seen this too. My main campaign got a 17% quality score and gets a six to eight percent conversion rate. Yep, that's that's what it's about. That's literally what it's about, guys. Quality score is not the target. We want to make money first. Make money with your ads first. You will never have a client angry at you, you will never be angry at yourself. You will always do good things if you have a good quality score. If you have a bad quality score, however, then, uh, man, uh, sorry, if you have a, a bad quality score and a good conversion rate, you'll be perfectly fine. The problem comes in when people are so obsessed about quality scores that they forget the basics. Get the basics right. All right. Um, 
Thomas says, looks like I'm on the right path. I, I love that. All right. So MCX, this is now going back to my microphone question over here. Uh, get heard loud and clear with a mic that doesn't block people viewing you. Okay, cool. That is a good start. That's an absolutely good start. So what MCX is saying over here is you want to make sure that you get heard loud and clear with a mic that doesn't block people from seeing you. Like, you see me? <laughs> and this is the point that I'm trying to say. Although we're advertising the microphone, which I have over here in my hands, if I say to you, this is a 2.4 gigahertz mic, nobody cares. If I say to you, this mic can reach six decibels of loud, nobody cares. Why am I buying a mic in the first place? You want to focus on that first. So buy this mic and get heard loud and clear and stop having bad um, sound in your videos. That is a great place to start off with. But if you say, give me one second, Maria. If you say, um, if you say this mic is um, 6.4 uh, gigahertz or it's Bluetooth, guys, these are just, they're features, but they're not benefits. You always want to divide your ad copy out to features and benefits. So get a page out. You write on one side of the page. What is my feature? 2.4 gigahertz. What's my other feature? Bluetooth. What's my other feature? This mic goes really loud. Okay. Benefits. Write the words so you can. So this mic goes really loud so you can be heard well in your YouTube videos. That's the benefit. That's what you sell to the client. This mic has Bluetooth. That's the feature. So you can connect with all the devices you have quickly and easily. You see what I'm saying? That's what you want to do. You want to always think about what is, what is in it for the client. If you think about what's in it for the client, you can't go wrong with advertising. If you think of, oh, I want to sell more, I want to sell more, then it's not going to help. Rajesh writes over here, he says, for crystal clear audio communication and one click on and off. I absolutely love that crystal clear audio communication, one click on and off. No, yeah, you see, now the real marketers are starting to show their heads over here. I absolutely love it, guys. Guys, we should start a microphone company after this. I'm just saying, because with my Google ads and with you guys writing out these headlines and descriptions for the ads and the website, we will absolutely make a killing. So, yeah, um, let's see. How long do I want the live stream to last today? You know what? We're going to make it a long one. I'm going to stick around. Um, if you have any more questions about your Google ads, what I want you to do is ask them below uh, in the chat. I will gladly answer them for you. I'm going to hang around for a bit because I'm having a lot of fun on this live stream. Also, if you want me to follow up on something that I said previously, answering some of your questions, let me know as well. I think here's the thing. I think I'm just going to talk for the next two minutes just so that you get where I'm coming from. A lot of people that do advertising and a lot of people that do lead generation I think where they mess up, where they struggle is you're trying to communicate to the client how good your product is. But the client is probably aware that your product is okay, but they're wondering if your product can solve their problem. So another way that you want to think about advertising is how do we show the client that we can solve their problem. That is what I try and do with a lot of my ad campaigns. I try and show the client that we can solve their problem. Because if you start at the problem and you show them how you can solve it, the sale becomes very easy. If you start at the problem of um, we do, um, if, we, if you start off at the problem of I don't have any clients, how do I get my next 10 clients? It's very easy to sell your solution. My solution is Facebook ads. My solution is Google ads. My solution is blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get you pamphlets. We're going to send out 10,000 pamphlets and you're going to get your next 10 customers. All of that is solving the client's problem. But if you go on and it just tells the clients, oh, we are going to do Google ads for you and we're going to do remarketing for you and we're going to do YouTube ads for you, clients won't care. They won't care whatsoever. People care about the results. They don't care how you get there. 
You care about how you get there, but the clients don't care about how you get there. So be very careful with that when you're doing advertising. All right. So MCX, a uh, little bit of an update over here. Make a little notification sound. Bloop. Um, he sent me the keyword planner data over there. So let's go ahead and have a look at this keyword planning data. Um, there we go. All right. Cool. Real estate leads, uh, Greece. Real estate leads. Buy real estate leads. Yeah. So based on what I'm seeing over here, no, definitely not. You you're gonna get you're gonna be able to get five or six clients with this amount of search volume, but you are not gonna be able to get. Sorry, I think. Let me see if I can download this. I hope I can download this. I don't want to share your LinkedIn profile or anything like that. So just give me a second. I just want to show you guys what I'm seeing. Um, let me just minimize this over here. Are you guys still with me? Are you guys still okay? Are you enjoying the live stream? Are there a couple of things that you feel like I could be doing better? Please let me know in the chat. I appreciate your feedback as always. All right, cool. So... Um, Okay, I'm going to say share screen over here, and I am going to put this up here as well. There we go. All right, so let's just expand this as well. So as you guys can see over here, we've got our monthly searches over here. You got 10 to 100 searches, which is okay. 10 to 100 searches. The problem with these types of campaigns, MCX is you might get a few clients. You might actually get four or five leads per month. Unless you're the only person on the on the Greek islands doing this, you might get four or five uh, leads per month. But this is not going to allow you to scale the campaign. So in other words, let's say you're starting off at $50 per day and you're spending money and you're getting searches. Eventually, for real estate leads, you're going to notice these searches are drying up and you're going to see what happens is even if you have the money to spend, Google's not spending it in the ad campaign. This is the only problem with having this little monthly searches um, in your immediate area. I don't know what your starting budget is, but I, as a rule of thumb, 250 or more is good. You can work with it. 10 to 100, it's not bad, but you're not, you're going to get your first few clients. The problem here is going to come when you try and scale this business. You're going to struggle very much to scale this business and get even more leads. So I want you to be aware of that. Um, what you can also do is you can put, there is a special way to word it. And you need to find what the real estate agents are searching for. Um, maybe lead generation and maybe on the ad, right? That you only do real estate leads, but you have to be very careful with that because you need to make sure that you put on the ads that you definitely only do real estate leads as well. So make sure that you put that on there as well. But I usually go for 250 searches or more. Also, Philip is asking, um, he's asking, um, where is this taking place? Is it taking place on Mozambique, Greek islands or Greek, Greek islands? Um, so yeah, if you can answer Philip in the chat, that would really be helpful as well. Um, but yeah, be careful with this. You still need more search volume. This is not going to cut it. It's not going to make you a millionaire. <laughs> Unless you can get every single lead to convert and close and sell every single one, you, we, we're going to need a little bit more search volume. All right. So um, let me know if that helped. All right. So Philip says um, the ads need to answer the question or solve the problem. Remember, they're entering a search query that is usually a problem that needs to be solved. Make your ad copy solve the problem. Yeah. So this is... Um, uh, an amazing, an amazing insight over here by Philip. And let me explain to you guys what Philip is basically saying. Every time that you write an ad, every time that you do ad copy, every time that you do landing page, your job is to solve a problem, right? Your job is to solve a problem. A lot of you guys 
are just telling people, hey, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that, we do this. And you're thinking that if we have all the right features and if we charge the right price, the person's going to like say yes, yes to your service. That might be true, but most of the cases, if you've got 83 clicks, if you've got 100 clicks, if you've got 200 clicks, there's a problem with your landing page copy. There's a problem with your website copy. And that's probably where you're getting stuck. So you want to make sure that you focus on solving that problem and you want to make sure that you tell the client what their problem is. And I know it sounds kind of stupid because like, why is somebody going to search for a microphone, but they don't know that they need a microphone? It's not that. When you write good ad copy and when you um, when you write good ad copy and landing page properly, uh, um, sorry, when you write good ad copy, you see, this is what, how I know I need a glass of water. So let me just drink a glass of water and compose my thoughts. Okay, let's think about this this way. I'll give you an example. You go to McDonald's, you click on an ad for McDonald's. It doesn't just take you to the website, show you a picture of the burger, show you what the burger has inside, and then it gives you the price. It doesn't. First, what they do is when you click on McDonald's, even something as simple as the McDonald's website, they tell you there's free delivery. You can get it within uh, 48, um, not 48 hours. You can get your burger within two hours. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to solve you on, uh, they're trying to sell you on the product of solving your hunger as fast as possible. That's the sale. We're going to show you how we can get this food to you that's delicious as fast as possible. If you guys like McDonald's, if you don't like McDonald's, I can use another restaurant as an example. But this is what I'm saying. You want to always show the client that you can solve their problem. And you never, ever, ever, ever Want to just start off by just listing features and listing all of these stuff. What is the benefit? All right, cool. Um, all right, so MCX, I see there's a little chat here with Philip going on. Greek islands as islands and the mainland. Uh, thank you for your tips. Helps a lot. Uh, you always help, Devin. Also good tip, Philip, indeed. Oh, we appreciate MCX. MCX, it's so nice to have you on these chats as well. Um, what I'm going to do is, I know I said I wanted to stay on for two hours, but it looks like there are no more questions. So if you guys do have any more questions, let me know. If not, what will happen is I'll close this out. I had a really good run today. I really enjoyed this today. Let me just check my other social media platforms just to make sure I'm not getting messaged somewhere else. Uh, people trying to ask me questions somewhere else as well. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing this chat with you guys today it was super cool yeah. all right cool we got that um all right cool any other questions any other thing that you ask? any other thing that you want to ask before i bounce um i will i will spam you with questions after i buy the cost oh man i appreciate that mcx by the way, um, if you're wondering what he's talking about, I think now is a good time just to jump into my Google Ads course and tell you a little bit more about it. So when I was starting Google Ads about two years ago, not two years ago, but when I was starting Google Ads about seven years ago, I had a lot of questions. I had questions like you guys. I was wondering, how do you generate leads? Why are my ads costing so much? Why is Google Ads telling me my ads are limited by budget? And why, even if I increase my budget, why do I feel like I'm getting the same results as well? So these are all questions that I had. And what I decided two years ago was because I was doing a lot of consulting, I was doing a lot of coaching, and I was doing a lot of um, speaking to business owners. And this is not even two years ago. This could be four years ago. I sat with uh, digital marketing agencies in... Um, Australia. I coached people from Japan. I helped people in England get more leads. I helped people with sales on their online stores. I helped people from America, from Canada. And what I noticed is everybody's asking more or less the same questions. So what, how cool would it be if I could took, take all of this knowledge and package everything up into a course that you can watch anytime? Now, Inside my Profitable PPC course, I do exactly that. So 
I'm going to just show you the website today because I'm pretty lazy. So I'm just going to do you that. And this course is literally built for you if you've lost money. So if you've lost money on Google Ads, then yes, this is for you. If you've never lost any money on Google Ads, then no, this is not for you. But basically what I do is I take you from brand new and I literally show you how you can build a Google Ads campaign from scratch. So basically I'll show you how to create the landing page. I create a landing page. I show you how to create the ads. I show you how to, most importantly, how to optimize the ads. And on top of all of that, I do monthly coaching calls just like this, where you can literally come and ask me anything. In fact, we're having our next coaching call. Let me see when is our next coaching call. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see over here. Our next coaching call is actually in one day, one hour and 29 minutes as well. So basically, I've built the course to give you a framework so you don't have to uh, scratch your head like I scratched my head when I was starting out and when I was a business owner. I'm going to lay everything out there. I'm not going to hide anything. I'm not an agency. I'm not trying to run your ads for you. So I'm not going to give you like half of my knowledge and then hide away the rest of my knowledge. I'm going to give you everything that I've learned over the past seven years working with clients all across the world on how to do this better. And even if you're a digital marketer, you're more than welcome to buy. If you're a small business owner, definitely this is for you. Or if you're somebody who is making up leads and trying to sell leads or even an affiliate marketer, you're more than welcome in my course. The only thing I ask is that you come in and that you're serious and that you understand that Google Ads is a long-term game. Nothing's going to happen overnight. We're not going to solve the problem in three days. It's going to take about three weeks of work before you start seeing some results on your ads. So I hope that you know this. Um, and yeah, what I've also done is I've linked it down in the chat. Also, if you look below the description of this video, you'll find a link to my course. It's called Profitable PPC. Guys, we have got so many good reviews. Man, let me show you these reviews. My mind is always blown away when I look at our review section because these are our video reviews. By the way, we've got like eight video reviews. I've got a separate YouTube channel just for my video reviews. And these are all the success stories from the course. So I am not saying you should buy it, but the social proof is there. You can see what they're saying. You can check it out and you can make your mind up for yourself. All right. Um, I think I want to, if there's no questions, I'm going to hang on just for a little bit longer. But if there's no questions, let's see what Thomas has to say over here. So Thomas says, Devin, can we find these live videos on your channel to replay some gold in here to check out? So yes, you can find the live videos on the channel. I'll show you exactly where you can find them. So all you need to do is I'm going to go to share screen. I'm going to go over here and I am going to click on YouTube. Once I do that, all you have to do is go to channel. And if you look under live, you will see all of the live streams that I previously did over there, my friend. And you can go back and you can play them, play them for your friends, share them with somebody you love, do whatever you want to do, but you'll find them over there as well. The last live stream that I did, I did a two hour deep dive on lead generation. That one, you're not going to be able to find because I share a lot of juicy secrets on that specific one. So what I want to do for that specific one, if you want to access that training is I'm going to leave a link below in the chat. Um, it's called the 100 Leads Workshop, and it's basically the recording of that live training. So if anybody wants it, it's there. It's completely free. Well, at the time of recording, this video is completely free, but that's I share a lot of good stuff over there. I share frameworks. I've got a lot of slides prepared out. It's about two hours of training over there. Um, all right. So it says here, an error occurred. Wait a moment to try again. All right. So I'll just wait a little bit and then I'll post the link over there. But yeah, if there aren't any more questions or rather, let me ask you guys, do you have anything else you want to ask me before I go? Um, I had so much fun doing this. Um, I was actually expecting a lot more people. I was even telling myself maybe I should chill out for half an hour more just to see if a lot more people show up. But man, it's been a long, hot day. So I'm thinking maybe I should call it call it quits over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys if you have any more questions. I know MCX said he's going to save all of his questions for when he's inside the course. I appreciate you, my brother. 
Um, is there anybody else who wants to ask me anything before I get on up out of here? Mm. Okay, so MCX asks a really good um, question over here. So, um, and also he gave a really good compliment. I'll read the compliment first. You rock, Devin. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for doing these streams and helping people. Yeah, man. I know there is so much questions when it comes around to Google ads and just nobody's answering it. So might as well give you guys some answers and help you guys out. All right. So do you judge the success of a campaign in less than two to three months? I typically know if a campaign is going to work or not going to work in about two to three weeks. Now, there's a very special set of circumstances that I look at, but these are the most important things. You have to understand that every Google ad has a conversion rate of about 3%, right? So I'm going to put it up here on the screen just so that you can see what I'm talking about over here. Uh, so we're going to go average conversion rate Google ads. And as you can see here, it says uh, survey participants report 3.1% to 6%. The number is quite closer to, if you dive into all of these reports, it's about 3.73%. So what does that mean? You need to get a lot of clicks on your Google ads before you know that it's working. If you have 20 clicks, 30 clicks, it doesn't matter. You still will not know if your Google ads are working. So what I typically like to do is I like to wait two or three weeks and I like to have 300 to 400 clicks. That's how I know my keywords are working. That's how I know my ads are working. What a lot of people do is they run the ad, they get a, a whole bunch of clicks. Like let's say they get 60 clicks and then they say, oh, the ad is definitely not working. 60 clicks is way too early. You don't know what you're doing after 60 clicks. And uh, Performance Max is really messing people up because in Performance Max, it's sending you all of these clicks. So Performance Max will send you 2,000 clicks and you'll go, oh, I've got more than enough proof that my ad is not working because I'm running a Performance Max campaign and I'm getting all these clicks and nothing's happening. You need to understand that the clicks that come from Performance Max campaigns are horrible clicks. They usually come from apps, like this, like four-year-olds playing on their parents' iPhones. They usually come from bad places. So although you might have 2,000 clicks, it's not quality clicks. What you want to do is run the campaign for two or three weeks, and you want to look at your search terms report. There's a report in Google that shows you what people are searching for your ad to pop up. Once you see that you are showing up for the right searches, then about two to three weeks, given, let's say you get 100 to 200 clicks, you'll start to realize if you're in the right area or if you're not in the right area. But yeah, it's much faster than two or three months. What could take a while to figure out is your optimization. So when I start running a campaign, the only, the only goal I have for that campaign is to get leads, to get conversions. Then I know, okay, this campaign is working. And then I want to know how often can I get a lead off of this campaign? Is it going to be once every two weeks? Is it going to be once every month? So I want to know how often do I get leads? So I'll see, okay, I start getting leads. I get about seven leads a week. So I know this campaign can produce about seven leads per week. Then what I want to do is I want to keep it running for two or three months because I want to see, can I get the leads cheaper? If I'm getting the leads for $34, can I get them for $15? And that's usually optimization. And that's usually where I start making my money back on my ads. Most ad campaigns are unprofitable when they're starting off in those first two or three weeks, but that's not the right goal. You shouldn't be looking for profitability. You should focus all of your energy and effort towards getting the leads, getting the sales in, and then you will know if you have a good campaign. Uh, Rajesh says, thank you very much, bro. Have a good day ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Rajesh. Thank you for showing up. I really and truly appreciate you. Um, uh, MCX also says remove mobile apps from account level, by the way. Yeah, definitely. I need to actually make a video, uh, about how to remove mobile apps, but that's a good point over there. So MCX says, so you wait for 600 clicks plus, uh, and expect 3% or better while doing negative keywords, etc. Yep. That's correct. 
I want to see a 3% conversion rate. If I see lower than a 3% conversion rate, I usually start to worry unless it's a competitive industry where I know a 1% conversion rate is good. So for example, if you are a law firm, then a 1% conversion rate is fine because you're going to get so much money off one client that it doesn't really matter. And lawyers tend to have the best types of Google ads. So it's a very competitive space. So in that regard, then yes, uh, expect uh, a less than 3% conversion rate. But if you're doing anything normal, you should be at 2 to 3%. It's going to take you a while to build up to it, but you should be around about there. Um, and like we saw with your landing page, with the previous landing pages, it's usually the landing pages that get you in trouble that usually don't convert. And people end up blaming the ads, but it's not the ads. It's usually the landing pages, right? So guys, I want to say thank you so much. Um, before I get out of here, um, let's just see if I can, if I missed any questions. If anybody has any more questions, let me know, but I'm getting ready to get out of here. Um, so Philip says, we only work on the three D's uh, rule. We make data driven decisions. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. There is something in digital marketing called statistical significance in that if you get three clicks, if you get three clicks on an ad, you don't know if you have a good ad. You need to wait for a statistically significant amount. My friend Pamela says that's about 30 to 40 clicks on each keyword can be a little bit more, but that's what you're looking for. So with that being said, I just want to thank you all for showing up for this uh, live stream. I really enjoyed it. Um, you guys asked really good questions this time. I really enjoyed it. Also, let me know in the chat, in the comment section, what you want the next live stream to be about. If we're even going to do one this month, I don't know because I've got a pretty packed editing schedule, but I absolutely love this. Thank you, Philip. Thank you so much, MCX. Thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. I really appreciated you from South Africa, from Greece, from Italy, from Singapore. I appreciate all of you guys for stopping by. I will see you next time. And um, yeah, thanks for everything. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.